Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel and my craft space. Today I wanted to talk about some gesso and how I use it in my junk journals, scrapbooking, crafting, all that stuff. Just how I use and like to use my gesso. Um, so let's start. There, there's uh, These are heavy gessos. These ones are by Prima. Uh, Prima is my favorite brand so far that I've tried and um, I've tried a couple different ones. This one is heavy gesso so it does coat a little better. They also make a clear. I just don't have that one yet. Um, so let's start first by checking out what it says here. Um, it says that just this gesso is white, opaque, matte, ground acrylic. It works well as a primer on most surfaces including canvas, uh, wood, paper, metal, chipboard, fabric, plastic, etc. It dries quickly. It works well for a variety of color products, providing a smooth, non-yellowing, chalky background. Gesso is water-based but permanent and flexible after drying. It will mix with pigments or acrylic paints to create a range of customized colored grounds. Apply with a paintbrush or a palette knife and uh, it's non-toxic and archival safe. So that's all good to know. Non-toxic and archival safe means you can use in your scrapbooking. And um, let's see if this says anything different. This one is black gesso. It's heavy, black, matte, ground acrylic. Um, it just tells you how to use it and uh, keeps it pretty simple on this one. So let's just chat a little bit about how I use it in my products, uh, in my crafting. Um, the first way is I use it to prime any of the boxes or packaging that I like to make journals out of. So this is just a little jello box and I have made jello box journals before. Let's see, where does this one uh, close up here? Mm -hmm. There it is, over here. Okay, so we'll just open this one. Now it's especially good as a primer. Let's zoom out just a little bit as a primer. So um, primer is used to help you prepare your surfaces for whatever it is you're gonna do to it. Um, so uh, it also helps with, um, sorry, that's, my goodness, that was being very difficult. Okay, here we go. So it really helps to put it on surfaces like this um, it hides the color that I, you know, I don't want these um, instructions and colors to shine through in my book when I make it. So let's just cut these off here. And also, if you have a really porous surface, um, it goes on like a primer to make sure that it um, doesn't soak up a ton of paint or glue or whatever it is that you're going to put on your surface. So that is a really nice feature. So this one, I'm just going to use some white gesso. And it also can, uh, you know, if you have a colored surface like this and you want to maybe put a decoupage napkin or something over it, it can help you with that too because it will help get rid of some of this other stuff we don't want to see. Um, and the heavy gesso is nice to have because it means you have to put less coats. <laughs> so I put it on a little thick when I'm doing these um, just to make sure I get a good covering. And when I do this packaging for my journals, I will do both the inside and the outside. Um, I feel like it really helps to prepare your surface, like I said, and um, really blocks out some of those colors. So it just gives you a nice work area that is white and ready to go. Of course, you could use black as well if that is a color that you're doing. So it just gives you this, you know, a nice solid work surface to work on and make sure that um, it's not gonna soak up the paint or glue or whatever it is that you plan to put on there. So now in my normal um, method of crafting here, I would let this dry turn it over and do the inside as well, just so it's nice and primed and ready to go. So that is way one that I would use gesso with my crafting. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at um, the second way, which is kind of, we already touched it a little bit, but like if I have this yellowy tag and maybe I don't want it necessarily to be yellow, I want it to be a little more white, you could go ahead and take this here and just paint it on and um, it can help give you a different look here. So that is a nice way 
to prepare the surface and kind of change the color just a little bit. So, and you don't even have to do the whole thing. You can just kind of let it fade out into the sides, kind of like uh, blending there. And it, it's hard to see, but it did change it just a little bit and kind of prepares the surface. So if this surface was a little harder to work with, maybe you had sanded it or whatever, and um, you, know, you weren't sure it was gonna be great to put a napkin on or put paper on or whatever you're planning to do, um, you could put some gesso and it would help you prepare the area. So that is another nice feature of gesso. So now let's go ahead and move these out of the way. And I will show you this book I have been working on where I have used gesso. Eek. Okay, so this is a B book I'm currently working on. And let's see, where's the first page? I have used some gesso on. Right here. So this one, you can only kind of see it a little bit because I've layered over it, but I did, um, I stamped a bunch of things on this, the back of this page, and then I put a piece of book page, and I used the gesso to kind of smear over and just kind of fade the background a little bit. So we'll go ahead and do a page sort of like this. I'll show you how I prepared the back. I'm not going to do all of the layers, but um, we will go ahead and do it in a second signature here. Let me just find a page. All right, maybe this one. What do I have on this side? Nothing, and we'll go ahead and do it right there. Okay, so like I said, I stamped some um, little scripted font in the background here. Put this over there, there we go. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and use a different one for this page, but it doesn't matter whatever scripted font you have, you can use any kind of words or lettering or whatever you want to put in the background. Most of it you don't even see, it's just for added interest. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. A little something to look at while you are looking at the page. This is archival ink. It's important to note that because um, as we are, it's a permanent ink, archival ink. So as you are working your way through your books, um, if you plan to do layering, you wanna use an a permanent ink because uh, it won't smear when you put other layers on top of it. So it will stay however you put it and not make a smeared mess. Okay, so I'm not getting really great stamps out of this one, but most of it will be covered anyways. I just want some uh, little words here and there to provide a little interest. So you don't have to do your perfect best stamping here, just a little bit of interest, that's all. All right, so we got that. And then I'm gonna take this book page and fit it to the page. So this is vintage book page, just torn out of a book that I took the block from. So I'm just gonna go ahead and tear it down to fit the page a little better. See how this looks. Okay, so that's perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and glue that in there. Now you can ink the edges or whatever. I'm not going to because I'm gonna use the gesso kind of to do that. And the gesso just kind of helps add um, a little bit of primer to this paper, which this is vintage paper. So actually this paper is really great to work with. I, I wouldn't necessarily need a primer, but I actually am doing it here more for the look. Just go ahead and put this in here and kind of put it wherever it is that you want it to go. Make sure we don't have any glue seepage. Feels all right, all is smooth. Now we'll just use our brush and you can use a palette knife to work with gesso too if you'd like. And sometimes it's nice to take the gesso out of the jar and put it on a in a little palette um, so that way, if you have anything contaminating your brush, 
maybe you pick up some ink or something like that, it doesn't go back into the jar. So we're gonna live dangerously today and just use a little bit as it is. You can water this down too if you wanna work with it a little thinner because this is heavy gesso. I'm just gonna go ahead and just brush it on here. And I'm not trying to paint perfectly. I'm just kind of smearing it along the edges again, just trying to kind of blend the papers together and make a smoother look here. So this is one of my favorite ways to use gesso. Kind of helps get the papers ready to go and kind of makes them look a little more like melded together, kind of more of a cohesive page. Just kind of smears in those edges, gives it a little bit of some like a misted look almost, almost like we inked all the edges in white. You could also use black, might have to be a little more precise in your brush strokes because the white just kind of blends into nothing, but the black is a little stronger of a look. Okay, so there it is, just like that. Kind of makes a, a little frosted border around the page and then anything that we put over here, you know, we'll still be able to see that. And we can keep adding gesso to the extra layers. Um, on the other page that I did, I added some cute little note cards and a tag. Let's see if I can find that page again. It wants to hide now that I want to point it out. There it is, I see the tag. Okay. So here, and I did ink these ones in black just for some extra contrast, but we could still take the gesso. You can kind of uh, frost your lace with it, your trims or whatever, just give it a little, um, just a light little smudging there, kind of blends things in. So especially in this area here, you can see the ink from the stamp is really crisp. We can just put a little bit of this gesso over it, kind of light, kind of mutes it just a little bit, which is nice. All right, so there's, so there's that way. And then um, you can also use it in place of like a texture paste. Now don't get me wrong, texture paste definitely has its place. Um, but if you, we're gonna come back to this. If you want to maybe stencil, I think this one's dry. It does dry really quickly. Um, so if you want to maybe stencil onto your paper, you can always use some gesso to do that. Let's find a little, some kind of a little pattern. We'll see here. All right, so we'll just add some kind of a little texture to this. And you can use a palette knife or you can continue to use a brush. And it is quick drying, so I, I like to move a little quickly. And you can use as much or as little of the stencil as you want. And just add some fun textured background with this gesso. So go ahead and pull this off now. Just brush it all in real good and then lift. So you can see it does raise up just a little bit provide some added texture to that tag and it's gonna dry just nicely. And then for our stencil, we're just gonna wipe it off with a baby wipe. It will just wipe right off. Or you can use a wet towel, whatever that you have handy. Uh, but you do like to clean these stencils off right away. So it doesn't stain them. Not, not as big of a deal when you're using the white, but the next time you go to use it, you'll have this crunchy stuff on there. All right, I'm just gonna wipe this off for now and I can take it to the sink later and clean it. I might just spray a little water here. That was a really cool stencil. I love the texture it's giving to that tag. I haven't used this one for a little while, so how fun is that? All right. Okay, so that is good. We'll set that aside. Now, I'll show you another fun way to use gesso. Inside this book again, I made some fun little pockets out of book page. And sometimes we all know that book page might have some words that really don't fit our book or that maybe we really don't want our journal viewer to uh, focus on. So, here we go. 
you can use gesso to kind of mute it out a little bit here and smudge just like I've done on this pocket here. So we're gonna switch to this other pocket and I'll show you just how quickly and easily that is done. Where did it go? It's always when you wanna show a page that it wants to hide. It's in here, guys. I know it is. There it is. All right, so I haven't done this one yet. So really, all I did on this one was I just put the gesso right onto my fingers. I dipped it right out of the jar. And then, see, I think this is about some, like, FBI or cop stuff or whatever, but I really don't want that to be the focus of my journal. So we'll just kind of mute out these words a little bit. Take the focus off of that. You can, of course, use your brush here. Just smudge it in. On the other one, I just simply used my finger, and I'll show you guys that just here. So this one, got the gesso out of there. Gonna let this dry. Okay. So just dabbing some of the gesso right onto your finger, and just smearing it right across here, however thick or thin you wanna go. And it just kind of blurs those words. You can still see that they're there, so you get the interest. Yeah, see that one says it's something of a reaction of a chain smoker or something. I don't really want that to be the focus of my bead book, so, you know, goodbye to those words. But I still get the fun of having a nice book page pocket. So, there we go. And once that dries, that'll be really cute. And then on the other one, I just put a bee stamp in the corner there. So that is another thing that gesso is good for. And um, now we'll switch to, to some black gesso and I'll show you some one of my favorite things to do with black gesso. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit into uh, this palette. So we use just a palette knife here. And you can see I've done this before. <laughs> Just put a little bit into the palette. You don't need a lot, depending on the size of the page that you're working with. I will just put a little in here. Close the jar. You want to make sure you get your jars uh, nice and closed. You don't want these to freeze or overheat or any of that stuff or dry out. Um, so definitely use the stuff that you have or it will not last forever. I'm not sure how long one jar will last. Um, I've had my other jar, which is a really big jar for a really long time, um, over a year or more. So now we're just going to squirt some water in here and thin this out a little bit. And this was the one I was using for white, but we'll just go ahead and use it anyways. Just kind of mix it in so it's nice and thin. Now my favorite brush to use um, to do this technique is a fan brush, but mine is not in here right now. Um, so you can use any brush, just uh, know that it'll be a little different. I'm gonna go ahead and put some splatters on here. I think I wanna do this page. And to protect some of the other stuff, sometimes I just lay some extra book page around so that it doesn't get everywhere that I don't want it. So then you just take your brush, you dip it into the gesso and you splatter like this. So you can tap it here like this. You can also use another brush or Tim Holtz even makes a splatter brush and it has fun bristles that you get to do this. You, some people use a toothbrush. Um, it can be a little messy, but can definitely be done. And gesso is a really great medium to use this for. You can also just use a black acrylic paint if that's what you wanna use but gesso does make really nice splatters and I love it. Look how cool that is. All right, and then one other thing that I have used gesso for, both black and white, um, although the black or the white one, I don't have to show you right now, um, but I do have a project that I did with black gesso. I'm using it as a primer. Uh, so this is a mixed media project that I did. I used black gesso and primed all over everything. So you can see it was just a paintbrush back here. Completely primed everything. And then I used some uh, Finnebar wax. 
um, to put in these highlights and these colors and you get these fun, really fun looks. Like this is uh, lace down here. You can kind of see the wax really works well with the lace. This is a chipboard and this is a piece of wood. This one here is actually metal and so is this one, but everything else um, aside from this piece and the chain is, uh, is not metal. So hardly any metal used here. I've got a piece up here and then this and this and then these two little things. Everything else is some other kind of surface. These are some beads. So the gesso primes it and kind of really makes it into this different project. Um, and it's so fun and so cool to work with. So you can do this with white gesso. You just get different looks uh, with the wax. And I will definitely be showing some of that on this channel. So anyways, guys, I hope you have learned some fun things about gesso. I'm going to go ahead and use up some of this that I have here. We'll just kind of paint it on here and blur out some of these words on this page. Maybe add some splatters just because. And we'll use this somewhere. Now it doesn't have to be anything precise. Uh, you can see the black still just kind of makes it nice. And this is just something to put in your background and have a little fun with. So we'll just go ahead and... Oop, that one was a really big blob. Now when you're splattering, you want to also make sure... Um, yeah, see, it's getting on everything. It's gotten over here. If you have a splat box, that is a good time to use it when you're doing splattering. I have some paper down on my desk, and that is a good thing because I've gotten splatters all over. <laughs> but I do think it is so much fun, and it adds a lot of interest to your pages. So I hope you guys have learned a little bit more about gesso and how and when and why to use it. Um, mostly I use it just because it's fun. It feels like... Uh, a little more of an artsy element that you can add to your projects and um, especially fun for doing mixed media. So anyways, I hope this helps uh, some of you learn a little bit more about gesso and uh, what to do with it, how to use it, what it is, um, all of those things. And look at our cool tag here as it's drying. I love that. So you can also mix colors with your gesso, mica powders, sprays, um, alcohol inks, all kinds of things. The sky's the limit with this stuff. So uh, you're only inhibited by your own creativity. So don't limit yourself. Get out there, try something fun, and uh, definitely look into some gesso because I love it. Um, I love using it. And um, it is so, so much fun to use. Um, Anyways, guys, until the next video, I hope you all stay well and uh, definitely comment and uh, down below if you use gesso. Maybe you have some other uses for it. Let me know. I'm always um, up for learning new things. So um, take care and I'll see you in the next video.